Ugly. Ugly. Giant. Bags of mostly water. Bags of mostly water? An accurate description of humans, sir. You are over 90% water surrounded by a flexible container. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Fully Functional, a TNG podcast. I'm Maggie, joined by Jeff and Dory. We are going on a journey through Star Trek The Next Generation, episode by episode. Jeff and I are huge Star Trek nerds. Dory is a Star Trek novice. Today we'll be discussing episode 18 of season 1, called Home Soil. And we'll start off with a recap from Dory. Okay, so the group is going to Valara 3, where there's a team that is terraforming. The Enterprise calls them. There's no answer. They're like, gasp, how dare. Um, (laughs) They they try calling again. No answer. And then finally, Director Mendel picks up and he does not want to talk to Picard or anybody. Troy, honestly, this was Troy's time to shine this episode. Like, she was great. (laughs) And she's like, this guy's hiding something. He's being really sketchy. So Picard is like, we're going to come down and visit anyway and then then there was a single dolly shot going towards picard where six different people's like midsections walked across the camera for (laughs) no reason other than i was like why was there six people what 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 Anyways, I just thought that was a bizarre shot. Somebody planned that shot real well. Yeah. Yeah. It just was like a lot of like chest and stomach shots. And I was like, why? (laughs) Why? Anyways, so they land on the terraforming building thing and they meet Louisa, who is the gardener of Eden. Oh, no. Um, Oh, that's Um, a terrible name. Yeah. Louisa. Gardener of Edens, like the the like the title or her her name. Her name, no no the Louisa? the name Gardener of Eden. Sorry. Oh okay okay yeah yeah I think she calls herself that in like kind of like a she's trying to be poetic or whatever. I don't think uh. that's like her official title. <laughs> oh okay well that that's what she says in there. So and then we meet Arthur, who is the hydraulic specialist. Bjorn, who is the chief engineer, and then beside when I wrote everybody's name down, beside Bjorn, I just wrote mullet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> an extreme butt chin. I oh yeah, that was a pronounced chin. I have issues with mullets. It, I won't get into it right now. <laughs> that guy just was the eighties. Yeah, we don't we don't have time for for me to talk about my feelings about mullets. Uh, these episodes are like forty something minutes. <laughs> okay, so everybody's like. It's funny because, like, Louisa is psyched to have people here and, like, excited to show off what they do and stuff. And then Arthur is like, I'm going to go into this, like, laser room to shoot a laser into holes or whatever. (laughs) So he goes in and then, like, all of a sudden you just hear, like, blood curling screaming. But then they can't get into the room. Finally, the doors open and Arthur has been, like, lasered. And I wrote murder, but then we find out a second later, he's not dead, but Riker refers to his living body as his body, which to me sounded really creepy because when people say body, it pretty much in my head refers to like a dead body. Yeah. Nice. But he was still alive and Riker's like, we need to move the body. <laughs> I was like, no, no, I don't like how that sounds. I mean, he was barely alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, like, let's still call him by his name before yeah. we refer to him as a body while he's still breathing. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it just, I don't know, something about that like kind of grossed me out. So they beam him up. Louise is really upset. She wants to go up um, to be with uh, Arthur. And, okay, Director Mendel has the weirdest facial expressions in this episode. When she says she want, that they should go up to the Enterprise, he goes through a journey on his face. <laughs> It's it's utterly bizarre. I rewatched it like three times. You're like, what is th- what is going through this man's head? Because these facial expressions are unreal. They're just so over the top, weird and random. OK, so they go up to, you know, find out. Yeah, Arthur died. And <laughs> but back in the lab, D- 
Data and Jordy are investigating with Bjorn. Data goes into the laser room in which they turn on the machine, the laser shoots into the holes, and then the laser points at Data. Um, did anybody else notice that there were two lasers on the back of Data's neck, but one laser machine? Yes. Yeah. That was weird. <laughs> um, and so Data has the reflexes of a cat and like jumps out of the way before he gets shot by laser. But yeah, he ends up stuck in the room again. He destroys the laser. Bjorn is like real bummed. But they like, Data comes to the conclusion that something is controlling the laser. Arthur was <gasps> murdered. And it was a murder most foul. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this, almost, this kind of becomes like almost a murder mystery <laughs> episode in a way. <laughs> but then they discover, so Data and Jordy see like a light in one of the holes and Jordy describes this so beautifully and but but the problem is we're just looking at a light so Jordy <laughs> sees some incredible shit and we don't see it though so I mean Jordy glad you're having a good time the rest of us are looking at something that will just like ruin our vision in a few minutes <laughs> I'd say it's a good example of tell don't show <laughs> so, yeah. yeah so they bring up the little the, the life form in which I don't know like they just sort of experiment with it but i enjoy dr crusher just like being in charge of that room and she's like magnify magnify scan or whatever enhance i don't remember <laughs> yeah enhance <laughs> all that junk i quite like it so then picard says to mendel he's like something you guys knew there was like something going down because troy said that you guys were knew some stuff uh, <laughs> that was a real well said sentence so they i don't know they they like don't really know what's happening but also they do oh so then like the life form like realizes uh, i don't know it 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 starts to like reproduce so then there's like two and um why is wesley there should he really be there <laughs> yeah i had the same thought cuz i was like cuz he's really not also there's a part where like so I think it's after they so they the the thing doubles and then they're in the hallway because they're like oh maybe we should get out this is getting a little crazy so they're in the hallway and Picard buzzes Riker and he's like let me tell you about this thing that's currently happening and you can see in the background there are people in the hallway and I was like is this really the thing to be discussed in a hallway yes where like other people can hear I feel like this should be confidential so like stop talking about it in the middle of a hallway <laughs> that's weird yeah so. They, uh, there's a lot of hand acting in the scene where um, <laughs> there is indeed. Picard, Picard <laughs> confronts Mendel and Bjorn and Louisa about what's going on that like this thing is real and you guys knew about it but like just Kurt kind of knew about it or Mendel knew about it but like not like super explicitly he knew there was something and then we learned there's like sand patterns and whatever it's doing shapes and I'm like Ugh not here for it but one of the best exchanges in the whole episode is so they're they're Jordy and Worf and Data are doing like analysis on the oh, duplication yeah. <laughs> of the um, life form thing and Worf turns to Data and goes but is it alive and then the computer goes probability positive and then Worf goes I wasn't, I wasn't asking, asking you, you. <laughs> <laughs> I loved I love that that was great so then Riker I don't know. They call there's so much in this episode that is like they tell us stuff is happening, but we don't see anything happening. They're like, this thing is happening and it's urgent. And then it's like, no, it's not I'm like no, we can't see any of this happening. You're just telling us shit. Yeah. So then there's like they turn on a universal translator because the micro brain slash life form thing is trying to communicate. Oh, yes. They do call it a micro brain, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. I hate that. I wrote micro brain. Ugh. In my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that name. Yeah. I prefer, I'm going to call it life form. So it like talks to them. So it calls them ugly, ugly, giant bags of mostly water. And I'm like, I mean, I think everybody was like, yeah, that's fairly accurate. <laughs> Nobody's going to argue with that, uh, <laughs> that description. And also, like, the life form, like, flashed while it was speaking in English. It flashed? Oh, man, this episode's supposed to be, like, <laughs> PG. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, the life form lifted up its top. <laughs> nice. Um, and, yeah, it just... 
it, it's basically a misunderstanding because they're like you knew we were there and they're like we kind of didn't we didn't mean to like bother you you're not alive but, to us yeah it, i don't know it was a little convoluted so then it like evolves again and it's or did it i don't remember if it evolved before or after it started speaking but it turns into like a crystal thing that it belongs in one of two places one place is the mineral exhibit at the rom <laughs> <laughs> for those who are not familiar that's royal ontario museum <laughs> every time i go i go to that mineral section it's pretty. oh yeah i do like i do like a shiny thing same i love the geology section Oh, it's beautiful. The other thing it reminded me of is like, I swear when I was younger, I had like a friend who had like a little like fancy light like that. Not a nightlight, <laughs> but just like a little decorative, almost like a lava lamp, but not a lava lamp. Um, obviously, because that's not a lava lamp, but just like, like a novelty fun light thing. Yeah, it, of course, they like resolve it in five seconds when he's like, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, they turn off the light to defeat them. So <laughs> please light. <laughs> We need yeah, he's like, light. <laughs> let's put them in the dark. And uh, <laughs> now we have the upper hand. And so now, like, everything's solved. They beamed them back. Although this is probably something that's, like, just nitpicky. But Riker says when they're going to, like, beam the life form back, he's like, um, chief transporter, like, focus in on the bell jar. Yeah. To, like, Oh, and there's and I'm no, like, there is no, no bell. bell jar. Yeah. It exploded. What <laughs> yeah. are they, like, what are they, tr- what are they catching on? Like, I, <laughs> it's like, this is stupid. Riker, you're looking at it. And he's like, <laughs> like connected to the bell jar. Like, Riker, there is no bell jar. You're in the room. You're looking at it. There is no jar. <laughs> I had the same thought. Like the platform. <laughs> yeah. It was like, Riker, Jesus Christ. Let's just say it ends there. It. I don't know. It's not. Yeah, they they beam it back and go like it's, we're it's, we're we're not ready to interact with them and and yeah, come back in three centuries. Yeah, but for, for some reason that was like when they said come back in three centuries, they really like zoned in on um it was all Wesley in that shot. And for a second, I was like, <laughs> are they talking to him? Yeah, are they telling Wesley to come back in three centuries? Hey, maybe <laughs> that's like. Wesley truly had nothing to do in this episode. Yeah, I, he. there was no reason for him to be there. I was actually worried at one point that they were going to be like, hey, Wesley, you need to help us because like, he magically fixed stuff. So I was actually oh, really yeah. relieved that he didn't, that he was just sort of, I mean, he didn't need to be there, but I'm glad that he was, if he was going to be in the episode, he did nothing. I'm okay <laughs> with that. <laughs> he also wore my favorite sweater. And uh, yeah, I'm, this episode... I, I don't even know what to say about it. So this episode actually suffered from like rewrites the day before shooting in many cases. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they, they had an idea for this and their question is, you know, what if we found life, but we couldn't identify it as life. And they didn't really answer that question very well. And obviously yeah. they, they had ideas. Like it, it's clear that yeah. this episode is not void of ideas. I would say that, by about the halfway mark of the episode, I was still quite invested in what the uh, what the mystery was, even oh, yeah. though I I knew where it was going. It was it. I found it a uh, like a decently enjoyable episode to watch, but it was a very nothing episode. Yeah, I'd say that yeah. once you hit the last ten minutes or so, there's really nothing left to hold your interest all that well. Like it's yeah. it's it's all very unsatisfying conclusions. Yeah, I think like the concept was interesting. Like I also I was into it up until pretty much when they when they were like, oh, let's turn off the lights. And I was like, that that's a really kind of stupid way to. Yeah, that was pretty stupid. Yeah, beat them. And that's kind of where they lost me. And I know that was till the end. But like, yeah, the concept of like them not being able to detect life the way that we know it, I thought was actually really interesting. And but yeah, the execution is definitely anticlimactic yeah. I, I just wish there was more like more drama like stuff we could see on board of like the things that it was doing because we know oh, they it infiltrated the computer but like we don't see that we just they just tell us that and i think that's what that's something that this ep- episode super like, really suffered for as jeff mentioned earlier this is a really like tell not see episode yeah. <laughs> yeah they just tell us oh yeah this is the danger like i truly i didn't feel anything well 
Yeah. Like I didn't feel the urgency when they were on the, the, the ship. Yeah. I think that's really exemplified when Data's battling the laser thing and yeah. <laughs> it's all off screen. And we don't even, yeah, we don't see it at all. Yeah. That's the action. Yeah. It, <laughs> it is kind of funny that like they open the door and like the laser's all like fucking smash to pieces <laughs> that scene was hilarious when yeah um, god what, what what was that it was that, hilarious uh... but like that should have been that should have been shorter if that was meant like as a joke because it was very clear it was like uh, oh man like we blew our budget on this fight that's happening just off camera <laughs> <laughs> well it's great because the uh the mullet guy walks in uh and he's like a year's work destroyed and data's just like i had no choice and then yeah. you hear or you you go back to like the depressed looking mullet guy and you hear the ding of like a piece of the uh the laser falling and you're yeah. like that's a comedic <laughs> mic drop right there <laughs> yeah it was funny but the way they did it it didn't it didn't land as well as it should have oh absolutely not it was completely out of place for what had just yeah. happened and especially with, like dory was saying with the rest of the episode where so much happens off screen it, it feels kind of obvious that it's like they just r- ran out of time to shoot it or didn't have the budget to shoot it or it was added last minute or some shit like I that. I think it was probably the rewrites, but I could yeah. be wrong on that. I'm I, There is actually painfully little information on this episode. It seems to have been written, shot, shown, and then completely dismissed. Like they, they have, they, there was maybe two paragraphs of total info that i can find on the whole episode mm. there is one thing of note though this will be the last episode in which gene ronberry had the opportunity to meddle as hard as he wanted to because it's the <laughs> last episode that he served as head writer before being kind of knocked upstairs so oh. from here onwards into the second season as well uh the show is run by maurice hurley for the most part okay i didn't realize he didn't make it through the whole first season well, he kind of did. Like, he, he serves as executive producer until his death. Mm. But they did kind of kick him upstairs after this one because they were having so many problems with him and the lawyer that I mentioned in the oh, last couple right. episodes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The guy who, like, really had a weird obsession with Wesley. Yes. Yes, him. So I love the um, the sort of original series vibe of this episode. Yeah, yeah. that would probably be the uh, Gene Roddenberry meddling. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> but it was... It, it, the thing is, to me, it was, it was not in a bad way because in a lot of, a lot of the early season episodes, it's like, you're just straight up trying to be, the original series or, like, man, you really haven't let go of the tropes from original series, but this one just felt like, like inspired by it. So it very much was, actually. This one is inspired by a TOS episode called Devil in the Dark. Is that the one where they find, like, the rock creatures in the cave? Yes. Yes, yeah. that's the one. The Horda is what they were called. Yes. And I think Spock, like, mind melts with them or something. Yes. After they try to kill it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And, like, the, the voice that the, uh, that the microbrain thing uses... The computer is very TOS. It's like yes, that was ugly I would actually, bags of mostly water. I would actually go out on a limb and say that that voice was not a good choice. It like no. as soon as I heard it, it completely took me out of what was going on. I was like, really? That's what you're going with? This sounds like camp sci-fi. Yeah, it made it really silly. Yeah, which was not to the episode's advantage. No, not at all. But yeah, I think this is like one of the first episodes of TNG that like kind of successfully pulled off a mystery like for the most part Mm -hmm. and i don't know if this was intentional but i do like that data is the first one who uh hypothesizes that it could be like life yeah that's a that's a nice little uh little tidbit there yeah especially since like data pretty much is inorganic life yeah (laughs) no one really brings that up though which is weird to me, at least. Yeah, they like. There's a lot of things they could have done with this episode that they didn't, and that's certainly one of them. Yeah, like I, I had the idea that maybe, like, maybe the way that they were able to like get through to uh, the life form was like by having Data talk to them, because he isn't a bag of mostly water. 
That's true. <laughs> he could have been like, hey, I'm also not organic and uh... ugly bag of mostly electronics. <laughs> 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 yeah, he could have been like, hey, uh, like these people are, are cool. They just really they made an honest mistake and et cetera, et cetera. They're my buddies. Come on, be friends with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, I'll be your friend. <laughs> I did like that Data gets to sort of put on his Sherlock hat when he's like thinks that when he goes to like investigate the drill room and he thinks that the laser was being controlled. Oh, this would have been a great opportunity to mm-hmm. do that, to actually put on the Sherlock hat. Oh, physically, yeah, yeah. instead of metaphorically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he loves to solve a mystery. Picard even says it seems we are becoming detectives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is sort of a side note, but I had to pause right at the beginning of the episode when the, they're talking to director Mendel and he, and they're like, you know, they can, your team can come up and relax. And then Riker goes, we have some holodecks, which you might enjoy. And I was like, enough from you about the holodecks, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, I mean, okay, to be fair, I do like all these holodeck episodes because they're so just absurd they're just they're crazy they're wild yeah but i was like calm down calm down like oh calm don't down worry there'll the be holodex. more holodex in the future <laughs> like right. yeah i was like just take it take a breath Riker. not everybody's into the holodex the way you are <laughs> i have a question yeah. what's that so they've always been kind of inconsistent about deanna troy's powers but how is it that she's reading that guy's mind from orbit I mean, they do that a lot. I know, but, like, I think this is the first time that they're really, like, dealing with it as, like, a major plot point. And, like, that's really far, guys. Yeah. It it must have something to do with, like, it seems like as long as she can see them, she can sense, like, their their thing. That makes sense. She She was able to sense, like, that whole planet. Yeah. Ah, yes, that's true. Something, something, uh, despair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm i unclear of how, it, of how it works, but it seems like as long as she has visual contact, she can do it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then right. in, in some cases, if the, if, um, if it's strong enough, she can do it from far away, like, <laughs> um like space entities and planets and stuff oh geez i wonder uh i wonder if they ever do that with like a a subspace communication oh i don't know sir he's he's seeming very dishonest Uh, he recorded this like an hour ago yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh also like i forget i forget which episode it was but troy straight up says like uh from his tone of voice and body language he's feeling this and i'm like Humans know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Humans can do that. Do they, though? Do they? <laughs> but no, like, uh, Troy gets a lot of stuff to do in this episode, and she is yes, very... Yes, yeah. she does. Her powers are actually very, very useful in this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My favorite part, though, with her was, so when they're on the planet and they're all gathered around <laughs> Bjorn's computer, they're looking at, like, the vegetation graph, <laughs> and she kind of walks behind everybody and separates herself, but she's like, I, this is before we know she's doing something back there, but she just, her head is so tiny and so out of place in the background <laughs> behind everybody that I, I was laughing, and then we see, oh yeah, no, she's, like, sensing stuff, but prior to that, you just see her tiny head in the background. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> uh, she is great this episode. I want more Deanna. I don't understand the decision to make her and Riker have like this romantic tension. E- yeah, it truly does nothing. Yeah. No, uh, it's something they're kind of inconsistent about throughout the series. They'll bring it up sometimes and then other times they'll just kind of ignore it when it should make a lot of sense. I, I did like I did like the bit in her quarters where she's like kind of you know, crying and and contemplating, like, what what they've done and, like, her life's work and all that stuff. Yeah. I thought that was cool. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm really glad because it totally... Oh, Louisa. Lo- I thought you were talking about Troy still. And I oh. was like, did Troy cry in this episode? No. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I You're thought not, okay. the... I didn't remember who you were talking about. So I thought the tiny head lady was Louisa, not Troy. No, no, it's Troy. She's just really tiny in the background. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think that the the supporting cast that they brought in for this episode were not good choices. Um especially yeah. the the younger two, like their their line delivery was absolutely god awful. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, it really yeah. stood out to me the amount of times they're like, "But what will we do?" and then they practically turn to the camera and stare at the audience for it and I'm like, G- "Guys, just tone it down. Like you're not on a stage." yeah it it was kind of an interesting cast especially mendel i think mendel was kind of the worst yeah he just everything was so dramatic there's even a scene where oh picard was like you're a man obsessed with what you do who knows what an obsessed man will do to keep going kill perhaps and then he turns around and leaves but then turns back yeah yeah he goes i create life and then like walks away and then right before he gets to the door and he goes i don't take it and then he leaves the room just <laughs> what fake drama mm-hmm. yeah he... i i really did not like him i wanted to throw something at him <laughs> yeah he's so like i mean that was the point of his character but just so willfully ignorant yeah like yeah. proud of it arrogant yeah, him and Bjorn are just really fucking stupid, because like <laughs> they uh, so the way that that they knew that stuff was happening or that they like kind of knew was that like so this life form kind of exists like just under the sand and it can like shine through the sand and stuff, and they said like oh yeah like the sand was sparkly but we didn't think anything of it and I'm like okay you know what fair enough. Yeah. But then he's like, then the patterns became specific that it started to create like geometric shapes and, and, and specific things. And I'm like, you fucking idiots. Like you don't, (laughs) you don't look into that. You don't look into like, what the fuck is that? You don't maybe go like, like maybe it's not like, like maybe your first thought isn't like, oh, the sand is alive, but like <laughs> maybe if the gr- yeah if the ground is making shapes of its own free will that is alarming like geometric shapes do get formed in nature yeah but not not in the way he was talking about not i can't imagine it would just appear on sand like perfectly formed yeah out of shapes. nowhere but i mean there have definitely been instances where like weird shit like that happens and it warrants exploration and yeah. usually it's something like, oh, there's some sort of weird magnetic force in this particular area. Yeah. Um, but if, like, so if you see, like, random sparkling and flashing, and then all of a sudden it's, like, very specific geometric shapes, maybe that it warrants, like, looking into. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. Obviously, like, maybe you, like I said, like, maybe you don't think the fucking sand is alive but (laughs) you know maybe there's something alive there like there's obviously like something's going on like you don't just ignore it some shit's going down yeah also like when they're defining life like they say like only life can reproduce uh rude um (laughs) Yeah. That doesn't sound true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, okay, I don't know if this counts, but my first thought was like, well, crystals grow. Like, that's not exactly reproduction, but like, I guess it could be considered that. I mean, the way that, that crystals form is they, uh, they're they they're taking what's around it and changing the, the uh, chemical compositions of it is in order to... Works? Yeah. Yeah, and it's essentially it, you know, feeding itself to grow to an extent. But yeah. I wouldn't really call it reproduction. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you're right. Because that was my first thought. Crystals, we say they grow, but we still don't consider them alive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that, that was my whole theory. <laughs> it, I, I, it's definitely... Um, It's definitely a good metric for what life is. Only life can reproduce because the way that life reproduces is very unique. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like, it doesn't create 
something that's like just an, an extension of itself. It literally creates its own self-sustaining body. Mm-hmm. So that that's what makes it unique. All right. Yeah, that's that's a fair metric then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also, it doesn't take like hundreds of thousands of years like uh, like crystals do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it depends on the crystal. That's true. Some of them you can grow in like a week. I mean, fucking sugar and salt crystals. Time to get a time to get a crystal kit. <laughs> you can grow your own crystals. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah. yeah, I guess you can. Oh, yeah, there's there's stupid. little crystal making kits that they sell as like a oh. science toy. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. You can even do like you can grow your own like sugar crystals and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, you need sugar. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You basically like you just mix like a bunch of sugar into water and put like a stick in it and then the crystals will grow on the stick. Okay, I've got a lot of free time these days. You're giving me <laughs> ideas. Does it matter which sugar? Does it have to be granulated or can't... I've got icing sugar as well because I... Pick. Icing sugar doesn't do it. Yeah. Okay, so regular sugar. Yeah. Okay, I got that. I don't yeah. have sticks though. <laughs> okay. Dollarama, here I come. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can even add, you can even add like food coloring. So it's like <gasps> color. Oh my God. That's how Just they get me like... ideas. Yeah. <laughs> you ever gotten those like candy, like the... the the candy sticks that it, it's literally just like crystallized sugar on a stick. Oh, yep. okay. Yes. I know what they are. I don't, here's the thing. You could also probably I, add like your own flavoring too. I don't tend to think about how my food is made. <laughs> <laughs> and that is done very consciously <laughs> because I, listen, gang, I've had Taco Bell multiple times. <laughs> I don't want to know what's in that. I had a pink cream soda the other day. I don't want to know what's in that. (laughs) And Taco Bell, I think like in Quebec, they can't even legally call it meat. Oh, that's great. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. I mean... Like, and honestly, it's probably just because there's like a lot of filler in it. Like, it's not like... Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, sawdust. Well, it's Welcome like to the science segment yeah. of our podcast. Yeah. Well, it's like how how Pringles can't legally call themselves chips because there isn't enough potato in it to like be called a chip. That does explain why they don't taste like. What the hell's in a Pringle? Yeah. Ugh, Pringles are cursed. Yeah, I do like them, but they are cursed. Eh. I don't like how they flavor them. It's too dusty. Oh, I kind of like that because I like, okay, I'm going to full disclosure. I know this is gross, but I kind of like to lick off the flavoring first and then eat the chip. You're That's an animal. the only, no, uh, Maggie agreed. That's how I eat every Dorito ever. Oh, same, same. And so then you get double Dorito. <laughs> yeah. You get the flavor and then you get the chip. It's a double experience. Oh, so. So I, I'm leaving. I'll talk to you guys <laughs> never. Sorry, a note about Doritos, but apparently they have the technology to make Doritos like the same flavor, but without getting the dust on your hands. No, I like that. That's the third that's the third level of the eating Doritos. Exactly. That's why they don't do it, is because people like that the the Dorito dust gets on their fingers. Yeah, it's a three uh. level experience, yeah. you guys. <laughs> oh yeah, that's like Doritos. That's an afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> to like plan ahead. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here, but I feel <laughs> immensely disturbed. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Waiter, check please. And by the way, the reason Doritos are so good is because they have MSG. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Also, a- MSG That's... is not as bad for you as people make it out to be. It's just a type it's of like salt. salt. <laughs> yeah, it's literally a type of salt. And essentially, racists made it sound bad because they didn't like Chinese people. I think MSG is my second favorite food after gluten. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> ah, the four basic food groups. Salt, MSG, gluten. What's the third one? Ice cream? Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. That's, that's how little there is to talk about this episode. <laughs> uh, it, there really is. I got like a page of notes and I I've gone through 
I didn't write anything down. <laughs> I'm not oh, going to lie. I've, I've gone through all of them except for one thing, which is just a quote that I found really funny. So I'll get to that later. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, two things, because one of them was, it was one of the uh, the tell, don't show moments when mm-hmm. Jordy is like up close kind of staring at it. And he's like, whoa, what is it? It's an LED, <laughs> bud. It's literally just a torch. <laughs> click, 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 click. Yeah. There's a there's actually a moment towards the end of the episode when uh when Riker is beaming the thing out back down to the planet, and you get like uh you get Riker in the background and the 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 silicon creature in the foreground, and I don't know why they could have used a light source in it that had an actual dimmer, but instead they used something that had like different dim settings. Uh, I don't know if that was just, like, all they had to work with or something, but it's, like, 100%, 75%, 50%, 25%. And it's, like, that looks really unnatural. It looks like you're turning a light on and off. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, it could be, like, like you said, there was, like, a lot of last-minute rewrites. Yeah, it could very well have been that. Did not have a lot of time to get this shit together. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> I can go over a couple of other things that I took note from the episode. I liked the jumpsuit. A double-breasted jumpsuit is always an interesting choice. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Oh, there's a scene where, I think it's closer to the end, where everybody is staring really dramatically and, like, strong, f- like, just staring at something really, like, in front of them, forward. And there's a line... I don't know. It's just a really weirdly dramatic thing that everybody's just looking forward and then, like, Picard leaves the room, but we still don't know what anybody's looking at. Oh, great. Because <laughs> everybody's staring really um, forward. There's also, yeah, so they re- they realize, you know, that Data goes, um, meaning the microbrain might be photoelectric. And then they pull the most dramatic focus to Picard and then... He says a line, but the line's not relevant. Just the way they pulled focus to Picard was really funny. And just, I don't know, that that made me laugh. Um, I mean, that yeah. that moment, the way that they delivered it, all I could think of was like bananas in pajamas because he turns to Jada <laughs> and, and he's yeah. like, are you thinking what I'm thinking, B1? I think I am B2. <laughs> Photoelectric. Oh, oh that kind of actually made me think of Pinky and the Brain. Is that, oh. Are you oh, thinking yeah. what I'm thinking? What is it? I don't remember what the line is. Something like taking over the world. I don't know. I used to watch it a lot as a kid, but it's been a long time. Yeah, there was kind of like a couple of little things. Oh, oh you know what I did? I was thinking about ter- I think like terraforming a planet, that was your job. That's kind of really cool. Yeah. That is really cool. What a neat job. I... And, you know, and honestly, Louisa sold it. Yeah. She, this girl, she her job sounded cool. And I didn't even know what kind of position I'd have on a terraforming team because i have no let's say technical skills <laughs> i've killed every plant i've owned which included you know a cactus and a bunch of air plants um so obviously the like nature growing part uh i have the highest level of science i have was grade 11 biology <laughs> so i truly don't know what i do there but i do think like what a cool job yeah and what job security because <laughs> yeah. yeah. it takes like 40 years so it's like oh shit nice <laughs> although i like i oh, am f- we say that but then of course in this situation everybody yeah. has their job and arthur died so rip yeah. to arthur <laughs> sorry I am, arthur i am genuinely fascinated by the concept of terraforming and how like how it can be accomplished i once was mm-hmm. like watching this documentary about it and it was about like how we could theoretically terraform Mars, and it es- <laughs> it essentially involved polluting Mars. <laughs> oh, I mean, humans are great at that. Yeah, that's true. So basically, like you, it was a long time ago, and I don't remember the details. But basically, like you, um, I think it was carbon dioxide. It might have been like other things, but it's like. You send enough and it kind of like builds up an atmosphere because oh. I don't I don't think Mars has an atmosphere. And then basically well, like you know, send some scented candles, <laughs> some like you know twinkly lights that you'll set up an atmosphere on yeah. Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Look, 
get a Pinterest board. Yeah. <laughs> Mars, maybe in your spare time. Uh, get, get that romantic atmosphere going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. Set a mood, Mars. Set a uh. mood. <laughs> Honestly, okay. So when I was a kid, uh, I learned that, like, Mars has ice caps, right? And that, like, Mars has... Oh, ice cap Cheetos. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. There's, there's Tim Hortons on I Mars. Couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. I'm sorry. I I couldn't help it. I couldn't, no, that's I fair. I couldn't help it. <laughs> Ice caps and an atmosphere? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, sign me up to go to Mars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, what I was saying was, so, like... <laughs> what you were saying is, there's ice caps on Mars, and yeah. you want one. Yeah, I definitely want a Mars ice cap. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what I was saying was, uh, Mars has ice caps, and Mars has... <laughs> Mars has seasons, because they, um, when they take pictures of it, they, like, they grow and recede. Right, like they're they're bigger at certain times of the years and smaller at certain times, and like the big thing was always like looking for water on Mars, and mm. my thought was always like, well, why don't they go to the fucking edge of the ice caps, if they're growing and receding? That obviously means that the the ice is melting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So why don't they go there? <laughs> I think I think Maggie, that- I think you're gonna have to call up NASA. Yeah, <laughs> demand ice caps. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I th- I think they have sent a rover around there, and I, I think there is logistical problems in sending uh, stuff to like the poles of planets and stuff. But I don't know. Yeah, you're NASA, it gets a lot colder out. there. <laughs> you're NASA. Figure it out. Yeah. Also, <laughs> <Come> on, NASA. <laughs> also, Mars missions like seem to be cursed <laughs> because the like. I think there's been, like, two or three rovers that have just, like, not worked <laughs> or something. All those, every time I see those, like, videos of the rovers on Mars, though, it's it's so sad. Mm-hmm. There's something so depressing about these rovers. I don't know if it's just because they're, like, by themselves, but somehow they've managed to make machines look really depressed. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's because they're, they're all isolated and, like, we've... Um, also, I think it's because we named them. We yeah. need to stop naming these things because we're going to get emotional attached to these robots who die alone in space. Yeah. Well, actually, like, yeah, humans are very good at, like, personifying inanimate. Anything. Anything. Because, <laughs> like, yeah. I think one of the rovers uh, had, like, a birthday. Like, yes. Yeah. And, and they programmed it they, to sing happy birthday yeah, to Yeah, they programmed it to sing happy that birthday That is, to honest, that's heartbreaking. I know. To have to sing happy birthday to yourself. But, uh. With other people watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, every, everyone is like, oh man, that's so sad. But I saw someone have, like, a really heartwarming take on it. That, like, all these, uh, like, all these really smart people who have very serious jobs and like are doing like this intense scientific work like got so attached to this machine that they like programmed it to sing happy birthday and like i mean i just think that's can they work i think that's really cute <laughs> it is sad it is. but it's also it is. really cute i also can we make requests of what songs i want somebody to sing tiny dancer <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine just That'd like dead silence and then just like Blue jean, babe. And that would be... Oh, my God. Mars is sounding pretty rad. Twinkle lights, ice caps. <laughs> Candles. <laughs> Midi covers of songs. <laughs> <laughs> Just Elton John 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> Just requesting music, whatever you want. <laughs> Come on, Rover. Play me Backstreet's Back. <laughs> I don't know why that popped into my head. <laughs> I mean, why not? Yeah. I mean, what would you play if you were on Mars? Oh. It, it would definitely be Backstreet's Back. Oh, you know, you know what you play? Spirit in the Sky by Norman Greenbaum. <laughs> <laughs> that song's about dying. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. 
but it's catchy as or radar love oh you yes guys, <laughs> that's a fun song to hear on mars yeah <laughs> oh there's so many i could keep going Oh, Spirit in the Sky is a great uh, song. Ro- Rover play theme from Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Behind These Hazel Eyes by Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> or I Don't Hook Up by Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> Wait, wasn't that like a George Michael song? No. No, no. That was... Um... I'm pretty sure that's like an original Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> I don't remember. I remember the music video. She was getting married, but it was like muddy or something. Yeah. I think there's a George Michael song that's maybe like, I think it's like be, Behind Blue Eyes or something like that. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Um, I I'm not remember. super familiar with George Michael, but oh, can you imagine Faith on the moon? <laughs> <laughs> can we keep Faith off of the moon? <laughs> yeah. How about Freedom then? Freedom by George Michael? Freedom. No, no. Cancel jitterbug by wham (laughs) (laughs) or what's the oh shit what's the the song oh careless whisper (laughs) oh my (gasps) that that that's the atmosphere careless whisper with the ice caps the twinkle lights and the candles there we go it's careless whisper that's a that's the perfect suggestion we got it NASA it, hire us for Mars terraforming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got some we've got some really good ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Very important for scientific research. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Atmosphere is everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. when you're terraforming, yes it is. Yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so let's have like a very <laughs> mediocre coffee milkshake on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> and some Doritos. Yeah. And some Doritos. <laughs> Actually, I take that back. Uh, to, ice caps aren't mediocre. I love them. I love them. I don't like coffee, but this is like my way of drinking coffee. Yeah. Guys, it's just sugar. Oh. Yeah, it's delicious. Wh- I'll take all the sugar. <laughs> that's why it's so good. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. It is. Oh it's God. like a okay. coffee crisp. Coffee crisp doesn't taste like coffee. Oh, no. <laughs> so good. The coffee crisp is amazing. If you're okay. expecting coffee, don't get an ice cap. <laughs> Oh, accurate. Okay. Hear me out. Or a Just had a crisp. really quick, like, brain thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you go to those ice caps, like the physical ones, not the drink. Yeah. You get some of that water. You go back to your atmosphere area. You have, you brought sugar, and then you make the little ice, the sugar water stick things on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing it back. Yeah. You can do <laughs> bring that. Bring it full circle. Back. Yeah. <laughs> and those are special. That's like Mars sugar pops i don't know Ugh. oh trademark <laughs> marcus sugar pops <laughs> i watched this chemistry channel called uh, nile red and he made water out of diamonds that's that, impressive yeah it is because <laughs> you can I mean if you get it hot enough you can technically melt diamonds oh yeah and he there's like s- the you can take the off gases and like distill it into water like I I don't remember the process, but it was really cool. And it just reminded me of that, of making, like, the sugar water on Mars. (laughs) Was the water good? Uh, He said it just tasted like water. (laughs) Oh, okay. Fair enough. (laughs) I don't know if I'd want to drink diamond water. I'd consider it. Yeah. I'd want to know what it tastes like. Something about that. I mean, not even the taste, just the idea that I'm consuming diamonds. Yeah. I'd rather wear it. It is a little bougie, (laughs) but... (laughs) I mean, just to say you drank diamond water, it's kind of a flex. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I, I can see now some, like, rich yuppie saying, yo, you want a bottle of diamond water? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, people are fucking drinking sewage water. They'll drink anything. I mean... Diamond water's better for you. Once know. again, Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In fairness, Taco Bell is a few steps above sewage water. Just, Only a few. But, also, Only a few. <laughs> but here's the thing. I've also had Mountain Dew, so... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's comparable to <laughs> sewage water. <laughs> I've also had Red Bull. And to me, those are like yeah. basically the same thing. They look the same. They look radioactive. <laughs> um, that's a good, good color. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the kicker. I would thousand percent drink both those things again. <laughs> uh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, I used to do the vodka in Red Bull. Oh, my God. Yeah. I it's, feel like that would kill me. It. It kind of does. Like, <laughs> the high is so high, but the crash is 
like insane. <laughs> when, when we get are able to get together in person, I know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, I died. So, did anyone have any notable or favorite moments out of this episode? Because like it's hard to even mention specific moments that are all that good. <laughs> I mean. Not really. Like, I thought it was an overall enjoyable episode, but there wasn't really... Yeah, it really... just doesn't stand out. Yeah, there wasn't really anything that stood out to me. I did like the um, Wharf line. Oh, other yeah, than that, that was the, good. The, the, like, I wasn't talking to you, but other than that, n- not really. That that was a good moment, but there there's one that, uh, that, that like, passed by me over the first time, but then I, I had to rewind the scene because I was being distracted by something, and I noticed it and was like, oh, that's a, that's a little weird. Okay. And I realize it very much fits with uh, the way that Star Trek does things, because this is a very tech-tech episode. Like, there's a lot of kind of useless tech talk in this that Mm. doesn't actually stand up to science very well or stand up to computers very well or whatever. Yeah. Especially the line about how you have to be a master programmer to program a laser to target movement, (laughs) which is absolutely not accurate. All you need is a sensor, and you can do that in Python. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, you can script the damn thing. So there is a moment when, jeez, oh, what's the old guy's name? Mandel, um, I think. Mandel. M- Mandel. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this this is when they beam down for the first time, and Mandel is still kind of showing them all what everything does, and he distracts them from that woman's spiel about how great terraforming is to say, <clears throat> "Here we have something that may be of interest to you: a vegetation graph." And that is just the most anticlimactic thing mm-hmm. I can possibly think of to uh, to follow up. Here's something that may be of interest to you. Like, in no <laughs> world can I consider seeing a vegetation graph to be exciting or all that interesting, especially when it's over like a forty year period. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she I just might. she just showed them an interactive map of the planet that showed the vegetation. That's interesting, but just a graph showing it, it's a line. Yeah, I want to know yeah. what they're growing in 27 years from now. Please, please explain. Show yeah. me. Also, the graph was very indiscernible. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. I, it's like, what am I looking at? I, I don't know why, but I'm always expecting a bar graph. And this was not a bar graph. <laughs> <laughs> or even like the circular, the pie graph, too. Oh, yeah. You like never see chart. those, though. Yeah. yeah, it was a good old, old line chart, yeah. graph. <laughs> Give me one of those two graphs or I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now I guess we should get into predictions for the next episode. So the next episode is called Coming of Age. And uh, Wesley gets to take the Starfleet entrance exam. Uh, 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 oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <Yep. laughs> it's a Wesley episode. Honestly, I forget uh, what happens in this episode. So your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I mean, technically, could I just say Wesley takes his exam? <laughs> yeah, you can. I mean, the exam doesn't make any sense, by the way, so I hope you enjoy that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm excited. So it's not. I mean, there's other hijinks involved. Yeah, there's okay. also a B plot, um, but I won't really tell you much about the B plot. Can I guess the B plot? Yeah, okay, sure. That's what I'll do. Somebody's trying to sabotage Wesley. They don't want him to do it, and it's Crusher. She doesn't want him to <laughs> join yet. He's too young. <laughs> all right that's that okay i'm, I'm probably going to be wrong but i mean that that's what i'll do for my prediction i'm actually okay. very excited to see what the like exams are like oh my god i totally forgot in this episode Riker calls another person an ensign right that's how you pronounce it yeah yes yes i wrote it down correctly yes phonetically wins and and i was like this woman who looks like she's in her 30s or 40s is an ensign and i'm like that's the same current level as wesley no, Wesley is an acting what? cadet. Oh, he's wait, no, sorry. I guess he no. is acting wet ensign. Yeah, he's yeah. an acting like, ensign. This woman is basically the same rank as Wesley. I'm like, oh, this poor woman. Uh, she does have seniority uh, over, like, I mean, an acting ensign. But yeah, yeah like, barely, but... people do spend, like, a good, like, you can spend years as an ensign before you get oh. promoted to lieutenant, I believe, is the next... Do you have to, like, apply, or do you have to get chosen? They are not really clear about it for Star Trek. It's very inconsistent. There's an episode in a way later season that implies that you kind of get 
selected for promotion. <gasps> oh, yeah, that's I, almost a bummer. I think you can like put your like hat in the ring. Like you can be like, hey, I like I want to become like I want to become an a lieutenant or whatever. But I think like uh. I think like your department head like kind of they they give you evaluations like at a, like at a, any job where you can get promoted okay interesting you know you do like performance evaluations and then like some are selected to be promoted okay well i'm actually pretty excited to see what this exam is yeah <laughs> and the different facets of it cuz i do they tell us what the prime directive is no I'm kidding. <laughs> Not yet. I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you ever, I don't know if the show ever gives you like a, a good, clear explanation of it. It does. It does. Because they have to explain it to other races occasionally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you'll okay. get it laid out a little better. All right. Because oh, I would have thought that like to be sworn in, you'd have to like memorize it and say it. So. Yeah. It's, okay. it's never really but... given like, um, it's, it's never really given like a, a quote for it it's yeah the prime directive is something they do define for us but it's not something mm-hmm. that's like written in a piece of stone etched like, with like beautiful language it's, it's not, a so it's not like thou yeah. shall art leave other people alone yeah <laughs> it's it's not like the hippocratic oath or anything like that yeah okay yeah cool all right well i'm, I'm actually psyched yeah so we'll see if you're correct in the next episode <laughs> of <laughs> of <laughs> That's a great episode name. No, you know, we should change the show name to... How do you spell that? Well, I just laugh because I'm like, I, I know what it's about. <laughs> See if I'm right. He's going to do the test. <laughs> I mean, there's other stuff that happens. Oh, okay, that's true. That's true. He comes of age, if you will. Oh, no, gross. no. Jeff, no. <laughs> have to stop sexualizing Wesley. It's gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Sorry. Right. Continue. <laughs> why don't you guys, you know what, guys, watch along with us and see if Dory's right <laughs> on the next episode <laughs> of Fully Functional, a TNG podcast. Goodbye. <laughs>